Welcome back to this month's edition of Spotlight and Edmonds Real Estate Show. My name is Wayne Purser. I'm a realtor with Cobo Banker Bain in downtown Edmonds, just footsteps from the fountain. And this month in our show, we're going to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. We're also going to have a special guest, Dan Robles, with Co-Engineers. We're going to have our Spotlight and Edmonds Real Estate Weather Report. And we'll wrap up this month's program with a question from one of our viewers. Right now, I'd like to introduce Dan Robles from Co-Engineers. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Wayne. Great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your business? Well, Co-Engineers, uh, we're a group of licensed professional engineers, state licensed engineers, mm -hmm. and we're serving the condominium market, the um, management companies, and real estate professionals, and um, in, in the technical aspects of owning a complex building. Mm -hmm. So we, some people, they hire an engineer, they hire an engineer to... Um, to take a holistic approach to the technical problems, a proactive holistic approach to the technical problems of a condominium, and um, this is where we get most of our business. Okay, and why did you choose Edmonds? Well, I like Edmonds. I'm on the Edmonds Planning Board. I've been here for many years. I like uh, the community, and, and there's a lot of uh, the, the same problems that uh, are happening here in the community as, as other condominiums, so people can share ideas and they could share um, their experiences with each other. Right. So in Edmonds, um, how do you get your clients? Well, we get a lot of our clients, actually we get our clients nationally, but they come with uh, from a reputation or from uh, a plumber who's got a, a really tricky problem or a community who's just spinning. They don't know what um, what the priority should be or they don't, they're don't. getting conflicting advice from um, various actors in their community. And we come in and we just settle things out. We make them nice and smooth and help them prioritize and stop the spinning. And you get a reputation for, for, for being able to do that. So this is where we've been doing quite well with. Right. And what I think what you're talking about is that condominium associations have to do a reserve study, which talks about how they're going to spend money years out. And when in Edmonds, we have several condominiums that are over 30 years old, and materials only last so long. Well, you, yeah, you have, you have the aging condominium problem. Um, and you have many systems that are involved. And you see the contractors are very siloed. You get a plumber or a roofer or an envelope. But these are all interrelated systems. And, and we've been getting a lot of, of plumbing issues specifically because of the older um, pipes that are out there. But there's some new pipes that are coming and new technologies that are arriving that some cause are a little bit problematic. And we need to at least just be aware of some of the issues that are out there with new materials as well. Okay, so if uh, someone out there, one of our viewers is out there that is part of a homeowners association or a board of directors, it would be best to contact you to find out more of how your services can help them? Absolutely, and, and we have some key ideas that they can start working on right now which can translate into um, a lot of money later in the valuation of their property for incoming and leaving um, residents. Right. Um, well, yeah, it was great to know that you called me because you, you saw uh, one of our segments and you wanted to educate people in Edmonds and me also being a, uh, an owner of a condominium uh, a couple times in my life. I believe in them. Um, so what kind of things would you first say to a homeowners association? Well, like you, you're willing to get new ideas. You're willing to educate yourself about um, areas outside of your expertise which enhance your expertise. So we work in partnership with um, with all the professionals, with their attorneys, with the contractors, with the real estate agents, and with the community itself, the diverting interests in the community. The first thing you want to get um, settled up is, it's like car facts. You know how the, the market for cars is really settled out, there's mm -hmm. not as much volatility in prices of cars because you've got this historic record of the, the life of that car. The same can be done for a building and for a condominium. If you have very good records of what's been happening and you've got um, a, a, ver a verifiable sign-off that something did happen, then when somebody comes to look at your unit, you can show them this, this stack of paper. This is what we've done. This is the history of our condominium. Here are the drawings, and everything is compiled. And you can make a very solid argument that your condominium is worth more than the one across the street or somewhere else because you've got that data. So if you're selling a condo, having that information intact and organized is, is a very big advantage. And if you're buying a condo, look for that sort of stuff. Right. And and we've known uh, in the last few years there's been three big major condos that have been enveloped and they've done residing and windows, 
major expenses, and right. those are things that you help out with. Well, you have the envelope, and then the envelope is usually causing a structural problem, and that's usually tying up in the roof someplace. So it, we bring in the specialists when we have to. We're like a general practitioner. So you want to be able to see that stuff coming. You know, it's a $100 problem turned into a $100,000 problem. You want to see that stuff coming really early. And this is what we help um, try to get at. And then you can take care of it early. And you don't have these, these massive disasters with all these different contractors involved in their prioritization and so forth. Right, right. So if, um, if I happen to have a buyer and coming to uh, looking at a resale certificate, what are the major questions, one or two questions I should be having the buyer ask the board or getting information on? Well, the standard is, well, there was a... Um, there's the reserve study law. There's certain laws that have to be in place. And then you want to look at the, um, um, the reserve study. You have to look at, the, uh, at any recent um, work that's been done. You want to look at the age of the windows. You want to look at the age of the plumbing because that's something that's... You see new tiki torches, you say, wow, this is a great place. But you really have to look <laughs> at the plumbing. Correct. And it's unfortunate that the industry tends to advertise you know, new paint and new carpet and so forth when they don't talk about these more technical issues which kind of need to be looked at. They really do. It should be elevated in the advertisement of your unit that there is a new plumbing system and, and so forth. Right. And also we talked earlier uh, last week about um, sewer scopes and you give me some ideas of what to look for if there could be a problem with the sewer on a, on a residential home and also a condominium. What were some of those tips that you talked about? Well, there's good and bad. Um, the sewer scope, if, if the, the pipe could be paper thin and you send a camera down, it's going to look perfectly fine. And it's just nothing you can do. Or if there's a breach in the, th in, in the pipe and your camera gets stuck, you have to do an emergency dig out. And sometimes that's, under, that's underneath concrete. You never want to have an emergency. You right. always want to be upfront about that. So you could predict the life of, of these components. An engineer can predict the life of these components. A, a contractor would not be able to perform engineering work under their licensure structure, but an engineer can, can predict the likelihood there's a failure there. And there's a lot of, the building talks to you. You know, there's things that, they, that the building can tell you about itself, which, which reveal many, many secrets. And the past history will give you an indication. How that, that pipe's been maintained over time can give you an indication of what's happening down there. Um, but if it's old, we think it's going to go, you just want to be watching it carefully. And when it does go, you want to be prepared to do the right repair, the proper repair. And don't get stuck in a huge demolition to get to something. Right, right. That and catches you by surprise. And as you mentioned, that you can tell by different types of shrubs, if there's three or four shrubs <laughs> in a row. We or... call it a happy tree. Okay. So if you see three, you know, five identical shrubs and one's like five times taller, you're like, yeah, there's... There's a water yeah. issue there. Or, or you ask about winter. The, in the summertime, you know, if you're, the grass generally gets green, gets dry, and there'll be a big a green streak down the middle. There's another indication. So you watch it, you know, and these, these are things you look for. Right. They okay. can tell you a lot about the air condition. Super. Well, I want to thank you for coming on our show well, and you. educating our viewers. Also educating me as a realtor to better help my buyers and sellers. So that wraps up this portion of my special guest, Dan Robles from co-engineers, and now we're going to move on to our Spotlight and Edmonds Real Estate Weather Report. Welcome back to Spotlight and Edmonds Real Estate Weather Report. So in Edmonds, 98020, the 020 zip code, currently there's 28 listings. In the month of January this year, we had 31 sales. So the temperature is right close to 100 degrees. Uh, things are selling in days. Um, so it's a great market here in Edmonds. The, mar the rates are just flat. Rates aren't going to go anywhere for the next few months. Edmonds, 026 zip code, 69 current listings with 36 sold properties for a temperature of about 83 degrees. Uh, it's cooled down a little bit outside of uh, downtown Edmonds, uh, about a 45-day market. Muckle Teal, Briar, Linwood, Mount Lake Terrace, and Mill Creek, uh, South Snohomish County, currently has 170 listings with 147 sold properties in January for a temperature of 86 degrees, market time about 34 days. 
Shoreline, Shoreline's changed. Uh, 48 current listings, they had 33 solds in January, so they've sort of caught up with the inventory. Uh, temperature about 85 days, so it's cooled down. The last several months it's been 100 degrees or more. Um, average days on market will be 36. Uh, again, the days on market will change because if the home is priced correctly, it will sell within the first 7 to 14 days. If it's not, then it's going to take a while for uh, the seller to realize that they're overpriced and it will not be able to appraise at that value, so they'll decide to reduce their price. That's it for the Edmonds Real Estate Weather Report. Now we'll go on to a question from one of our viewers. Wayne, what are the pros and cons of owning a condo? Welcome back, and thank you for the question from one of our viewers. The pros and cons of purchasing a condo, well, always it's maintenance. Um, you may be a point in your life where you don't want to cut the grass or paint the exterior of the house uh, or fix some lights outside. That's what an association will do for you when you purchase a condominium. Features, you may find something that you want to find a condominium that has a swimming pool or a play yard or secured parking. Those are some features that you would like in a condominium. Price, condominiums can be expensive per square foot because you may have a view, you may have extra amenities, but condos are also an alternative for pricing uh, that's affordable for lots of people. Safety, you can just lock the door and go. You can let your neighbors close by, let, you know, let them know that you're gone for vacation or you're going to be gone for a few days. Uh, sometimes people are snowbirds. They'll have a condominium for the summertime here in Edmonds and go down south through the winter. Some cons of purchasing a, a, a condominium. Limited ownership. You only own from the paint inside of your condominium. So you own the cabinets, the floor covering, um, all the doors, and whatever paint, the interior features that you have on uh, your own personal insurance. The condominium takes care of everything outside of that. Homeowners association fees. Uh, there's pros and cons about that also. You're not out doing the lawn. You're not painting. So your association will be hiring people to do that. You'll also have a uh, uh, survey that has for long term. You'll be putting money away for long term expenses like a roof, uh, painting of the exterior, residing if you need to. So HOA fees. Noise. Um, condominiums nowadays or the last uh, 30 years have been made with better sound retention. There's a difference between a condominium and a uh, apartment that's been converted to a condominium. So noise, if it was built as an apartment and it's turned into a condo, it still makes noise like an apartment. So noise is a factor. Also rules. Uh, you'll have rules and regulations of uh, noise, uh, where you park, um, how uh, people come and go in the common areas. So you want to look at that also. Um, for me, comments about a condominium, you need to be involved. It's your investment, so you want to find out all the way from HOAs to the homeowners associations, resale certificate, how much money is in the bank, what are they doing about future expenses. Uh, as we've had guests on here before uh, talk about how you have to have reserves and make sure it's stable enough that you get things done and not have large excess amount of uh, dues that are going to be sent to you. So as a homeowner, and I've owned two condos before in my life, I believe in condominiums. They're for the right person, but you need to get educated before you purchase a condominium. That's it for this month's edition of Spotlight in Edmonds. We look forward to seeing you next month.